Cats rule, dogs drool, and you are cool for listening to this episode of the Retro Rewind Podcast. Reflux capacitor, fluxing, crew to stations, scanning for homeward bound, the incredible journey, 1993. Prepare to rewind in three, two, one. Welcome, Rewinders, and new listeners to the Retro Rewind Podcast, where we take a fresh look at movies and games from 15 or more years ago. I am your captain of the pod, Francisco Ruiz, and I'm joined by your XO and mine, Paul, the master interrupter, Paul Powers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Hey, we're, we're, we all understand that, you know, dogs drool more than cats, but it's my personal uh, belief that dogs also rule i agree so. i would agree with that i'd agree with that uh awesome paul uh, also for this discussion of the film homeward bound the incredible journey we welcome uh, aboard uh, back aboard magician theater actor and director daryl hafner welcome back daryl thanks how's it going guys going well do dogs rule or do cats rule uh definitely dogs all right uh, three for three here and uh, not only do we have Daryl for this movie review, but also co-host of the Cellcast podcast and Backlog Golf bookie, uh, Drew Dodgen. Welcome back, Drew. Hey, how's it going? And uh, I have to let you know, it's the, it's cats that rule and dogs oh. that drool. Thank you very oh much. Oh, my goodness. Well, you're outnumbered, unfortunately, Drew. So, so and- was Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Welcome guess that's aboard, true. Sassy. And look what happened to her. Went over a waterfall. Don't go she chasing. She survived. Don't go making Barely. phony calls uh okay. now <laughs> okay now it just so happens that this is both uh drew and daryl's third time on the pod so uh your incredible journey of being official retro rewind podcast crew begins now congrats on earning the rank Yay. of shipman so what areas of the ship do you want to serve in let's start with uh, daryl so I, I know you guys had a bunch of entertainment. I was wondering, do we you do. guys have like techies, like the uh, the lights and sound guys? We, we don't. Need more of those. Yeah, we need more of those. <laughs> Edna mode needs more. Of those. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, I like working the sound and lights and stuff at the theater. So I okay. thought, and at the church. So I thought maybe I'd figure out what you would call that on the ship. But uh, I think uh, ships technology uh, or ship, ships. Uh, Technology shipment. We'll go with that. The AV club? I don't know. <laughs> I, was th- I was thinking technology specialist. Specialist. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, it has to be shipment also. We had to work it in yeah. also. Technology specialist shipment. I guess I could work. And how about you, Drew? Uh, I'd like record keeper to put, since I've been, done so well with the golf. Okay. So uh, right. we have ship's historian. You can work uh, with Celeste Mora. So sure. yeah. Awesome. So another historian. Tag Fantastic. Team. What was that, Paul? I said tag team. Exactly. And now that you have a... So congrats to you guys again. And now that you have a quick flyby of who we are, Paul, can you give us a quick overview of the production specs for Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, the longest name in history? Oh, I've got longer. I was about to say. <laughs> well, we'll stick with Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey this time. All it right. was released February 12th, 1993 and runs an hour and 24 minutes. It is rated G and it was directed by Dwayne Dunham or Dunham, it was written by Sheila Burnford, or at least the novel was, and Caroline Thompson wrote the screenplay. The lead stars being Michael J. Fox, Sally Field, and Don Alder, who I did not see any of those three. And the music was composed by B- Bruce Broughton. Broughton, yeah, we'll yeah sure. Yeah. Broughton. All right, you ready for the box office trivia game? Let, uh, let's see, Drew and Daryl, are you guys ready? Yeah. In chat, let's hopefully you're ready. Let's go, Paul. Okay, the budget of Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, cannot be substantiated since precise records were not kept after Tannen shot a newspaper editor who printed an unfavorable story about him. However, it earned over $41 million at the box office worldwide. All right, we'll, we'll say that made money probably. Maybe. I don't know. It might be $60 million to shoot the cats and everything. Yes. Anyway, given this and the fact that it came out in 1993... How high in the box office do you think it ranks among the other movies released theatrically in 1993? Hmm, any idea how many movies total were released? 
We'll go. It's in the top 50. Top 50 again. Okay. It uh, made $41 million. All right. In 1993. In 93. Uh, Drew, what's your guess? I'm going to take it right down the middle and say 25. 25. How about you, Daryl? 19. Uh, Ashley in chat says 34. Uh, Bobo says, who did Paul say was the third star? I, uh, um, Don Ad- Alder? I, did yeah. you say Adler? <laughs> I might have said that. <laughs> Dr. Adler. Um, uh, 42 from Bobo, of course, of course. Good, Bobo. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, for my me, I'm going to guess, I imagine this is pretty popular. So I'm going to go all the way up to 10. Nice. All right. I thought it was popular too, but it made $41 million and it was also 41. Oh, really? Mm. So, so I good guess. Good job, Bobo. Bobo. Yeah. Good job, Bobo. Your, your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy finally pays off. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I don't <laughs> think so. So it's bound to happen eventually. Exactly. Exactly. Bam, he says. All right. Statistically, anyway. Well, thank you for those factoids, Paul. And let's see if any of them factor into our memory mind meld or subsequent roundtable discussion once Alice has located our target film. Alert! Alert! Approaching target. Spoilers incoming. Establishing analysis vector. From Walt Disney Pictures comes the story of three extraordinary friends on an incredible journey home. Home is just over that mountain. Wow. I hope you know what you're doing. A journey into danger. Whoa. Guys, wait up, wait up. Where they must work together. Hang on, sassy. If they hope to survive. I mean, this is like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Walt Disney Pictures presents Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Rated G. Starts Friday, February 12th at a theater near you. I don't think so. I don't think that movie's playing near me. Well, you hey, never... By the way, I was about to say, Don Alder it played Molly's father, so I think I did see him on screen. Oh, really? But, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have no idea, but that's good to know. Uh, that def- that commercial <laughs> definitely brings back some memories about Homer Bound the Incredible Journey, the longest title in history, but to give you some context for the things we collectively remembered about Homer Bound the Incredible Journey, the longest title in history, uh, before our rewatch, here's your, here's your memory mind melt synopsis. Why am I talking so fast? It doesn't matter. Keep going. Go, go, go. Thanksgiving and Chance likes turkey. Family of five goes on a vacation and has to leave their three pets, two dogs, and a cat. At a shelter. Shadow dies after saving Chance from being attacked by a mountain lion, but miraculously recovers. <laughs> Resurrected? What? Dogs rule and cats drool. They make it to their home somehow. Also, turkey, 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 turkey. Um, I mean, I, there, there were elements of that in this movie, but I'd say on the whole, it was... Decepted. <clears throat> but based on those memories, as flawed as they were, uh, what rating did they lead you to predict for for this film before rewatching it? Classic, nostalgic, or tragic? Let's start with Daryl this time. Uh, before the movie, I was guessing nostalgic. Nostalgic. Uh, how about you, Drew? What was your prediction? I was also predicting nostalgic. Okay. Uh, Paul, I'm sure, was predicting classic because it's Disney. Well, no, because I saw it in the theater and remember liking it. Mm-hmm. Um, that was over. That was almost what thirty years ago. Now, oh wow! But I haven't seen it since. Oh, but yes, I rated it as classic. Okay, I knew it. <laughs> well, at least that's what I predicted. What do you think I predicted for this? <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> you got if it. You, you know what? Oh if no! You didn't know I'm it was sorry. Disney. I thought you were going to say nostalgic. No, I. Yes, it was nostalgic. I don't know why. I, I read the wrong thing. Oh, really? anyway. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. What happened in what? Hey, know, hey, saving it. So I'm going behind the curtain. Let's continue. Based, okay. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if those predictions came true. But first, let's get into our discussion of the things we liked most about Homer Bound, The Incredible Journey, The Longest Talent in History. Let's spin up our... Best three. Or best two in this case. Uh, let's go around and say one thing we liked each, uh, starting with Drew. What's something you liked about this film? I have to say that 
uh, Rattler, the dog that played Chance, has got to be my favorite one of the animals in this movie. Oh, yeah. oh the the pit in terms bull, of right? The, and cer- yeah, in terms of the animal actors, because mm-hmm. apparently. All those times where he accidentally stepped in a gopher hole and then ran smack into the tree, those actually happened because of how the dog was. Yeah. And I saw, always thought those points were, were funny and Michael J. Fox did good ad libs to make up for the, yes. make up for those times. Totally. But yeah. I just, I just loved how energetic Rattler was, mm-hmm. uh, yes. in this, in this movie. It really fit the character pretty well. Awesome. Yeah. I, I totally that goes agree. Right in. Oh, go ahead. That Paul. goes into right into my like, cause I, surprisingly enjoyed the humor i was laughing out loud so hard when he ran into that tree and you know he wasn't he wasn't gonna get it he wasn't hurt by yeah. it it was one of those and some of the lines i thought were funny like the squirrel it looks like a squirrel with a really bad hair day or he, he says i got bitten by his butt things mm-hmm. like that Just, Ar- arnold schwartz kitty yeah stuff like that yeah, yeah was unexpected and i really enjoyed that well it's birdzilla <laughs> That, I mean, Ironically, that, a turkey. That goes right into something I liked, which was I loved Chance and Sassy's verbal sparring. They're always like going back and forth in sort of a playful way that fr- friends that are like, are like annoyed with each other a lot of the time, you know, like me and Paul, um, will go back and oh. forth. <laughs> oh, yeah, you go back and forth with that friend, but if anybody mm-hmm. else messes with that friend, you better look at Yes, out. exactly. That's a good way of putting it. So that's something I enjoyed. Daryl, how about you? Was it one of the characters or something else? Well, I, I'll, I'll kind of tie in. I didn't do like an individual character. I did mm-hmm. the three pets personalities. Yes. Mm-hmm. Overall, like just it seemed to fit the dog. The yeah. each dog, the personality, just to look at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it fits so well. I mean, like I nailed it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. The the old looking shadow, the young pup chance and sassy, just they they paired the actors and actresses to the dogs great or the animals great and then yeah. just I liked the 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 old wise dog and then the young one and then just mm-hmm. the prim and proper I thought they nailed I thought it was yeah. a great team. Whatever. Yeah. I love how they took the guy from airplane and paired him as the dad in this one. It was is a great pairing. <laughs> no, I totally agree with you, Daryl. I'm not trying to belittle what you said. I was just trying to be comedic. I'm glad you got it, Paul. <laughs> so all I was saying, yeah, I was just making a, a reference that Air, uh, Robert Hayes, who was an airplane, was a perfect fit for the dad in this. Like you were saying, the animals were perfect fits for the voice. Oh, okay. I, was being slow. I wouldn't have gotten it because I haven't seen Airplane. So. Oh, okay. I'm like, where is this guy from? Oh, Airplane. That's where. Yeah. No, I recognize the dad, the actor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. know where from, but yeah. I know it wasn't Airplane. I wow. haven't seen it was that. from the Airplane um, trailers or commercials. Maybe. Awesome, guys. Uh, so those are some things we liked. A lot of the characters, a lot of the animals in general. Uh, what? But I'm surprised none of those were our classic makers. So that, that begs the question. Or uh, ask the question, whatever the phrase is. Someone told me that that's the wrong way to say that. Patch, I know you're listening. <laughs> um, that gets us to the point of talking about our classic makers, let's say. So let's start with Daryl. What's the thing you loved most about Homer Bound and the Incredible Journey of the Longest uh, Child in History? So I kind of switched it. I had the animals as my classic because it, but because it fit. Mm-hmm. I, I oh, was more okay. than willing to switch it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. But for me, the other thing I really liked was, uh, I'll say the scenery shots. They weren't it like green beautiful. screen, like, yes. the, like the woods, the mountains and everything. Those looked like genuine, like outdoor shots. Not like yeah, they, they, were, yeah, they were, I never not thought la- like green screened or anything yes. like yeah, that. Those, yeah. I loved those shots. Like it, it was yeah. all. Like it all looked like it was on scene, mm-hmm. yeah, and it made a huge difference. Like, yeah, even to today's stuff where they can get it looking good, mm-hmm. you can't replicate like genuine stuff. And it, for me, that was huge. It looked yeah. great. All those shots, I never really thought... transported you out there with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I... it did. So the river, the mountains, just mm-hmm. the ranch itself, and just. All those scenic shots, for me, that was great. Yeah. I loved all those. Is that enough those. to boost Francisco's rating? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it doesn't need to be boosted. Who knows? Um, uh-huh. <laughs> 
Awesome, Daryl. Uh, Drew, was there something about the cinematography or something else that made your classic maker, or was it some completely different? Oh, my classic maker was Sally Field's performance as the voice of Sassy. Oh, really? Really? Huh. I, Why her particular? I thought, well, she, I felt, was the most in tune with the character. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, as much as I liked Rattler's performance as Chance, Michael J. Fox was for the lot playing Michael J. Fox for the most of it, mm. in my yeah. opinion. But you get to Sassy, and she made me laugh so many stinking <laughs> times in this movie. She has some of the best lines in the whole movie, like when she's being chased by the fat uh, dog uh, pet pound person, and he keeps going, yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. And she goes, no, dummy, dummy, <laughs> yeah, dummy. That, that was pretty good. Or was or, it do- dummy, 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 I think. Not doggy, yeah. doggy, doggy. I said dummy, dummy, dummy. Oh, I heard doggy, As, doggy, doggy. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, no, Daryl, we're not going to let you kid, talk. When no, we, continue. Yeah, I know how it goes. Yeah. But as a, <laughs> when we were kids, the one that, the line, at the same, when she's talking to the same character as a kid, we loved quoting this way, Thunderbutt. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> also, I liked her line to Chance near the beginning. Is that any way to speak to a petite dewdrop, you big flat-faced butt sniffer? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? That's a good point. I didn't, I, for whatever reason, I liked her performance. And yeah, the, a lot of the lines were great. Something about it didn't really, I, I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't quite jiving for me for as it a. It wasn't Roseanne Barr being all sassy because that's how I remembered it, <laughs> but it wasn't. It, I don't it, know. It seemed sassy to me. They didn't, oh, for yeah. some reason, it didn't seem to jive with the other two. I don't know why. I, I just don't get well, it. It's like oil and water. It's supposed to be. I guess. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Very aloof. Very like whatever. But I don't I'm know what it is, anyway. Paul. I don't know what it well, is. You're not a cat lover that's, like uh, that's Drew is. a good so. point. Obviously. I'm with Garfield up here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the Voltron lions. Those are all cats. I mean, geez. Exactly. Paul. That's so weird because I have to completely disagree with you respectfully, Drew, because. Um, the Voltron is our dogs. I, no. I, Go ahead. <laughs> no. That's the worst iteration of Ultron. <laughs> it's I, I, made of Lego. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but getting back to the movie, I really enjoyed Don Amici's voice as Shadow. Oh, I don't really? even know if that's even how you pronounce his name, but I only remember him for Cocoon. But uh, my classic maker was uh, hearing Michael J. Fox's voice as Chance. Just because it's been a while since um, I've heard him in a different role besides Back to the Future. Yeah. Now, back in the 90s, he was voicing, like, so many things. It was getting oh, nauseating was between, oh, yeah, like, um, what is that? Stuart Little and, oh, yeah. like, Atlantis. Oh, and yeah. He, he was doing all sorts of voiceover work. And so there's plenty out there, but it's been a while since I've watched any of them. So it was it was nice to get that enthusiastic, um, fun loving uh, time with him again. Nice. And Babo confirms your pronunciation of uh, Amici. I think that's what he said. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Excellent. For once, I got it right. Good job. <laughs> as long as it's not a Japanese name, you'll be here fine. <laughs> I want to reply to Cardinal Paladin back there. He asked what my Kingdom Hearts connection would be for this, since I always do that on our podcast. Uh-huh. I'm okay. going with Frank Welker as Experiment 221 in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. That's a fair connection. Is that a Lilo and Stitch reference? It was the Lilo and Stitch level, yes. <sighs> How did you know that? That's impressive. I mean, because that... I've said that one about ten times because we've done a lot of Frank Welker mo- movies that Frank Welker was in recently. There you go. So I and that's the only role he has. That's how I have it memorized. Nice. So uh, those are the classic makers. Oh, I guess I should have mine. Um, I you know I really enjoyed. It was such a sweet, heartwarming moment. When, uh, like, uh, Shadow and Chance think that Sassy's dead. And then they reunite. They, like, hear each other. And it's like, my boys, my boys. That was that was really pulled out my heartstrings in a, in a, in a good way. So that was my classic maker, that, that moment of the film. That's... Oh, I thought you were going to say when, when the cat almost died and when the other dog well, almost died. I'm not heartless, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wow. Wait, Francisco's not heartless? It's when was that a case? 
since his heart grew three sizes that one time. That oh, one time, okay. yeah. What was that yeah. for? Yeah, I was I was on that podcast when we <laughs> reviewed The Grinch. What? Yeah. No, but it was for another movie where my heart actually grew three sizes. Was or what? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that's where the reference is from, and I was on that podcast. So Got yeah. It. Yeah, that was my classic maker, but there's something else I forgot, guys. You might even say it's untold. You see, because it's the Untold Podcast, a speculative fiction podcast utilizing the genres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror, among others, in order to engage the culture's imagination from a Christian worldview. Every month, Nathan James Norman produces and narrates a new story presented in a unique and dynamic way. Some of my favorite episodes are Standoff, a flash fiction about a good cop snake in a robotic suit, and The True Light, a fairy tale about a heroine who uses her mythical light to find those lost in a deep cave. And that's episode 13. Check out the Untold Podcast at untoldpodcast.com uh, to listen and leave them a review on Apple Podcasts. Is that it? Yes, that was that, it. There was nothing about Homeward Bound, the Incredible Journey in there. No, but see here, Paul, I, I, I'm you're a smart guy. I'm surprised you didn't pick up on this. The stories of cats and dogs, they can't tell them. They're untold. Oh, I would have liked that if you just didn't kind of give me like a backhanded like insult. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I'm, I apologize, Paul. You are, you are genuinely a smart fella. So, oh, all right. Uh, but I'm not fishing or anything. Okay. So. <laughs> In fact, you're Sassy never taught me that. In fact, you're so <laughs> smart, I bet you could guess at the trivia coming up. Would you like to to hear some trivia? Is it about yes? Is yes, it about yes? Yeah, trivia. it's about that. Uh yeah. Did, yeah, I interrupted myself there. So <laughs> go for it. Did you all realize that when the Seavers uh wait, th- from Growing Pains? No. Mike Seaver? Apparently that's the name of the family. I did I What? I guess. I, was that even that, in the movie? Yeah, that was the name of the uh, of, of the quote unquote father. The rest of them had a different name because I, oh, okay, I don't remember what they just it got is. married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you all realize that when the Seaver and family, because the dad's the only one named Seaver apparently, are driving to Kate's ranch, Chance says "bat dog," and Chance is the one uh, voiced by Michael J. Fox. Uh, he says "bat dog" out the window, which is a reference to Batman. And Michael J. Fox was actually considered for the part of Robin when the filmmakers were considering introducing him in Batman 1989. I had no idea Robin was even going to be a thing there. Uh, but ultimately, that idea got scrapped. So my question to you guys is, what animal would you like to see get a superhero story made for them? So uh, not specific, uh, like uh actual like chance or anything but like like i'd like to see a dog or i'd like to see uh i don't know a whale oh, or something man. like that um as I a superhero uh, the first oh, thing man. that came to mind was a uh, plucky duck when he is bat duck but i'd like to see a full feature movie about that but that doesn't count right not okay. really i mean i guess you could say duck no but they've gotten superhero <laughs> treatments with That's... like darkwing duck and yeah. Yeah. yeah a full movie of that would be great all but... right I agree with that. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah. Some animal that hasn't gotten that. How about that? All right. Um, mm. Daryl, what do you um, think? That's what I'm trying to think. You said something that hasn't been done, and I go, my, my first instinct is to go like wolf or eagle or something, but they've had that kind of treatment, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but well, while you guys are thinking, in chat, Kevin says the tick. Yeah, that's been done. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bobo says a bee. Eric, the half a bee, I, I guess. Is that? I feel like that's a pun, but I'm not getting the joke. Um, so, um, how for, about a narwhal? I don't think anyone's done that. Oh, a narwhal. <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, for me, I think it'd be well, cool. I'd be to, wrong. Oh, go ahead, Drew. I was just gonna say the one I had. I just remembered. Oh yeah, that's actually in My Hero Academia. So now I got to think again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to say yes, platypus because I, I feel like that they Wait, they look sweet, in... but I, I'm about to say there's yeah, exactly. Perry the platypus and Phineas and Ferb, but he's oh, more yeah. I have, that's what it is. Superhero. Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, I haven't seen that because that's Disney, you right? Should. Well, you should. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right, guys. Maybe this is a poor. I thought there wasn't going to be many animals, but fine. I'll, I'll go with a frog, even though I think a frog. Uh, fr- uh, 
Proppy and uh, My Hero Academia, but that's technically a human with frog powers. Okay. So frog. I'll go with frog. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Frog. Super frog. Uh, how about, super hopping powers. How about you, Daryl? Along with Super Grover. Uh, I'll go with a snake. I snake? mean, okay. I don't know if it's actually been done, but snake would probably be cool. Nice. Aww. And that Paul, be... did you? Oh, yeah. You said narwhal. I said narwhal. Mm-hmm. Awesome, guys. Okay. You a giant that. lizard that breathes fire. Oh, nice, Kevin. Nice. Yes. Radioactive. <sighs> Great trivia, Francisco. And you, I Paul. have the answer to our re- recent audience question. But before we get there, I want to ask Francisco, what animal would you choose that hasn't been chosen? for? Plat- oh, super- I can't go with platypus? You're making me no. choose something else? Ah, uh, fine. Um, see, it's hard. While he's do- while he's thinking about that, our our previous audience question again: which which Karate Kid film was your favorite? We actually did not get any answers for that, so no one gets Ooh. a fourth dimensional fan membership. But regardless, I'm sure you were all thinking in your head when we said when we asked. So Daryl says two. Awesome. And for me, cool. I still I'm a, need to watch all those. Oh, well, I guess that's actually I hear more and more people that haven't seen all those. So you're you're yeah. in good company, Drew. I will say back to the question at hand, though, about which animal I'm going to go sort of in line with you, Paul, and say an orca or a killer whale. I think that'd be awesome to see. Oh, a, a superhero. Really superhero. OK. Yeah. So let's turn like it that. around to the listeners and let's hear their their answer. Actually, what yeah. animal which is. I should say this is this episode's listener question. What animal would you like to see get a superhero story made for them? There you go. Uh, we have blobfish also in chat. That's an interesting take. <laughs> Don't, is that is that a type of fish? I haven't heard of it. That is a type of fish. Okay, well. It's named after what happens when you bring it to the surface. Oh. It turns into a giant blob. Oh, okay. Like the guy from X-Men. And it dies. And it dies. Yeah. Because it can't survive what? under that low pressure. Like most fish, yeah. Anyway, send your answers about which animal you would want to be a superhero to trivia at retrorewindpodcast.com by the time we record our next episode, which usually gives you a week and a couple days after you, if you listen to this, the day it's released. Uh, but now that you have all, now that we have all had some trivial fun, let's find out what memories you, our awesome rewinders, had about Homer Bound, The Incredible Journey. Uh, David Gardner says, absolutely loves he absolutely loves this movie. Classic for me. Alex Ortiz says, don't be such a sissy, sassy. Uh, Dallas Panda Marshall Morris says, evil trick of the enemy. I don't remember that. Who says that? I don't remember that either. I, I thought he was referring to something else. but Oh, maybe. Okay. Gonna make it weird and boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Ashley Crowenbitter says, Sassy Sally Field, the cat, a bulldog that sounds suspiciously like, suspiciously like Marty McFly, and the grandpa golden retriever voiced by the late great Don Amici. I don't remember much, but I vaguely remember the intensity of the waterfall scene and crying in the last act of the film over Shadow. Aww. I still get misty-eyed thinking about those scenes to this day, even though I haven't seen the film in over 20 years. Whoa. This film was an emotional roller coaster for my seven-year-old self, and I'm not ready for another ride anytime <laughs> soon. Fair. I hear that. Uh, Danae Berg says, That final scene is just so timeless. Travis and I... Uh, quote it regularly he was just too old it was just too far shadow and then the music swell i grew up watching this movie a lot uh great character voice acting and complicated family dynamics really rounded the movie out well thumbs up stephen forrester says i remember loving the characters quite a lot shadow just because i liked his breed chance because i liked his personality and humor in the movie and sassy because of her sarcastic wit. I also remember being a bit frightened at the waterfall scene and wondering if sassy was going to die. Uh, Ricky Lambert says, growing up watching this and then finally seeing the original and not enjoying it because the animals didn't talk to each other. Wardell White says, I remember seeing the movie, but being more of a fan of the original movie entitled simply The Incredible Journey, narrated by Rex Allen Sr., the talking animals took me out of the film. I wasn't a fan of hearing Roseanne Barr as one of them. 
I have no desire to see it again. That said, I pray you guys will enjoy the movie. See, I thought it was Roseanne Barr, too. I'm not the uh, only one. So. Okay. And it's funny that Ricky and uh, Dale have conflicting ideas about which one's the better version. And I had no idea that there was a previous version to this that was just called The yeah. Ver Journey. Also by Disney, <clears throat> but don't tell yeah. Francisco. Oh, that. my word. Uh, we actually got for our, uh, another comment from Kevin Joshua Burnham. We actually got he sent in a video of his uh, of his uh, reaction or memory. So we'll play that now. Hey guys, this is Kevin here, the Dapper Man. I just want to say, I didn't really care for this movie. I actually had it on DVD, bought it for 25 cents at a thrift store, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Such a long title for a film. I guess they were planning on making a sequel, which they did. It's not really that good, in my opinion, at all. I believe it's rubbish. I believe the jokes, it falls flat, because most of the jokes is all about butt, um, poop, and fart, which is not very funny, and it's very foul. <laughs> I didn't really care for it as a child. My brothers just loved the film. I just did not for an animal film. I would say the score for the film is actually really good. Better than what the movie sh it should be for the film. If you want to watch a better film, I would say that of Babe. Better direction, better written, and better voicing, in my opinion. But that is my thoughts for Hummer Brown. It's a pass. I, I, yeah, tragic. Ooh. Wow. Thank you very yeah, much I'm for that. Yeah, I'm disagreeing with that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah i totally disagree yeah. babe's no good <laughs> oh i enjoy i'm it. not I've, a fan of babe i've actually never seen babe it just does I've not appeal to me years yeah i've seen it in the theater like this oh okay i wonder how All it right. holds up so thank you for sending people had a podcast about thank this, you for sending that in kevin uh and finally uh david bobke that's our babo says gentlemen it's been a while since I've seen it. Thinking back on it, I feel like the voice acting might annoy me. I feel like the kids might annoy me. I remember liking this movie, though. I think I'm getting old and cranky. Do you guys ever feel old and cranky about things? We do indeed, Bobo. And your comment mm -hmm. leads us right into Especially the one of us. ways Homeward Bound makes us cranky. It's time for our... Worst three. Worst three things. Our top two things, or top two things we disliked. And this time, I'm going to start with Paul. What's something you didn't like about the home, the Homeward well, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, The Longest Tile in History? Oh. Uh, animal control can't control animals. Well, yeah, what was that about? Oh, what my gosh. The heck? <clears throat> it's at this point, there were a couple hints, but when you have a dog holding the door against a human weighing three times its its weight mm. you realize this is for kids not for the whole family <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot of moments like that paul um yeah, there's uh, a few yeah, there's, okay all right uh let's go to daryl next what's something you didn't like was it the animal control was it something about the unbelievability or something else Nah, I had, uh, I would have loved some more of the animals to have voices mm. like maybe the like the the mountain Birdzilla. lion or the tur or birdzilla i yeah. mean i think they did a little bit of it in the shelter with the dogs talking yes, to sam yes, yeah. dogs yeah could you imagine if the mountain lion was voiced by arnold schwarzenegger oh that would have been amazing oh, that would have been, been amazing hilarious that may yeah, have bumped so, up I my mean, rain I not that, that would have bumped up <laughs> but i think it i think that would have just been a, like a fun way to do it just yeah. add a little extra to it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so I was thinking, oh, well, uh, they can't cross species talk. But then they have uh, cats and dogs talking. So, yeah, that sort of throws right, that right. out. Yeah. Okay, totally So, fair. I mean, it was just – I had to look for things on this one. I was – Rewatching it, I'm really enjoying it. So I had Aww, to okay, nice. Oh, I can give you some harder. some of mine that I. I I'm that sure I you guys say. could, but I was just <laughs> watching it. I really got back into it. I'm like, this, Aww, yeah. I was having fun yeah. with it. That's so. so great to hear. Uh, Drew, what's something you didn't like though? What wasn't great for you to hear about this movie that you watched? When I first saw this movie back in I think '93 or '94. I actually had this problem with the movie. I've, that's how long I've not liked this particular moment. And it's the scene where Peter goes to the police station to report the dogs and cats missing. Yes. <laughs> as much as I like to think of dogs and cats as family members, they're not human beings. 
You don't go the to the police station. You go to the animal. But he police. is a kid. What does he know? He wouldn't know he's, that. What? 12, 13? He's, a, he's yeah. practically able to drive. He should know better. Look, I'm a middle-aged man and I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, I wouldn't know who to go to to report a missing dog or cat, but I would assume it would be someone in the animal shelter, not in the police station. I Whoa. think you should call your congressman and say, "Hey, my yeah. my dog's missing." What are you going to do about it? Yeah. You want to be reelected. Uh, reported to the president. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't think any of the last 15 presidents would have given a care. Oh, well, probably not. Probably not. And neither did the police. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought saying, that policeman was awfully nice to him. Yes, he did I a agree. switch there. I agree I was like, that. whoa, I'm, that's too much of a switch. I'm just saying you don't go to the police to report a missing dog and cat. I, Not even in a little bitty town, much less was it San Francisco? San Francisco, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, they're more understanding there in San Francisco I as far that. as pets are concerned. <laughs> no, they're not. I agree with you on that point, uh, Drew. Something uh, that now I don't know if you guys will agree with me about this, but and it's I don't know if it's necessarily related, and maybe it's a misconception on my part. I just viewed the movie wrong, but. That moment when... Were you facing the wrong way? Yeah, that's it. I was go looking backwards at the wall. Where's this movie? I just you hear it. It's an it wrong. Experience. What do you mean? <laughs> Why can't I find it? Listen to my words, guys. <laughs> okay, let me lay this out. That scene where uh, they're, uh, Sassy is getting fish for them, and then uh, oh, yeah. the one for a chance goes up on the land and gets go, the, the bears are investigating. As far as I can tell, those were black bears looking at the fish, maybe cubs, I don't know. But then out of the forest comes a grizzly bear, like which is supposed to be the mom or something, which I why is a grizzly bear hanging yeah. out with black bear cubs? It did, did not make any sense. They're to adopted. Me. Admittedly, this I is have not never... the bear. This is not the bear. And both of those were grizzly. So no, I'm don't give me that. I'm going to admit right now, I have never seen grizzly bear cubs, so I can't tell you what color they are, so it didn't bug me. Oh, you know what? Let me Google yeah. that right now. We have this fancy thing called Google. So let's see. I don't wait. I don't Google during the movie. Well, oh. Or during a podcast. <laughs> I just didn't watch close enough. I I noticed they were I noticed they were different colors, but I just thought, well, maybe yeah. young bears are, are, the hair will brighten. Young grizzly <laughs> bear fur uh, you know, just fades over time. Like I know I, some black cat's fur does. I mean, for the yeah. most part, there's lots of images are, that it varies, but it is a golden tint like grizzly bears that isn't it are, isn't are, black wait, like the black wait, bears. Are you are you against inter interracial marriages and oh, couples and family? Oh my gosh, Paul, are you seriously with that? That's what it right? sounds like. You know what? You don't Paul? like mulatto bears. <laughs> So here. Why is it always got to be a color thing? So these these <laughs> are the darkest up here. The rest are like yeah, pretty, pretty yeah, standard gold. Yeah, that's what they gold. were in the movie. No, pretty. they were not. They were black They're bears. They're in between there. Eh, eh. I'm not gonna say you're wrong. It's just I'm just gonna say it didn't mess with me. Okay, fine. Yeah, fine, guys. Fine. Well, what were what was the things that messed with you the most, Drew? Your tragic oh, the maker. Thing, the thing that m messed with me the most is the simple fact that I can't decide if I like the ending or not. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh. Like because you, here's the thing. Yeah, go for it. I, there's a part of me that wants to go, oh, yeah, the dog somehow was able to get up out of the uh, out of the pit. Well, and Chance run. motivated him. Yeah, but then Cel was able to be <clears throat> catch up fast enough that he was able to be just a little bit behind Sassy. Yes, and then there's also slow. And then there's also moments earlier, like when Sassy goes over the waterfall, part of me wants to go, yeah, the cat's dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's move on. And yet, I can say in both instances, I had tears in my eyes when both came out alive. <laughs> yeah. So my tragic maker has more to do with myself in the movie. I can't tell if I'm mad, if, if I'm upset, if I, that I have conflicted feelings between realism and sentimentality. Mm, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Well, it, oh, can can I comment uh, for a moment? I this was deceptive for me. I honestly thought I remembered Chance like getting behind Shadow and pushing him up that 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 muddy cliff or I side think or something. Tried, didn't? No, they they cut no? away after he, Chance goes down and talks to him. They cut away uh, and they're yeah. at the family's place. 
Maybe Shan- they decided to edit that out with the, you know, his butt in his nose kind of thing. I'm like, we don't need that in family friends. Okay, yeah. And Maybe. I'm I sure that's it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that scene is actually my tragic maker. Cause oh, really? I would have. Okay. Awesome. Because be, I mean, obviously, I've seen the movie before, so I know the ending. I know Shadow makes it. And I'll admit, I forgot the waterfall scene. I forgot mm, Sassy too. going over. Yeah. I forgot Sassy going over. So when obviously I know Sassy's gonna make it, I would have a hard time believing that Shadow's not, even when yeah. he drops into the cliff yeah. into the pit. Yeah. So what I I would have loved to like maybe they rest overnight because I wouldn't expect Chance and Sassy to leave. I would, like the scene goes dark, like they stayed the night there. I would have loved to see like Chance actually get him out. Yes, yeah, yes. But yes. if you did, you wouldn't know if he's not making it at the end. That that's the part that kind of pulls oh, at your yeah. strings. I understand why they did it, mm-hmm. but after Sassy's made the waterfall and yeah. it's a Disney movie, I'm putting money that all three animals are making it. Yeah. Back. yeah so i would have loved to oh, have seen like <laughs> wow i would have loved to have seen like this big don't, triumphant don't you know. sh- like chance stepping up and actually getting shadow out of the pit mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. the hero moment yeah okay. that would be cool paul don't you know that bambi's mom just got lost in the forest after that scene oh that's why you don't see her again She's alive. Oh, okay, and I, and I suppose she heard the shot and ran off. Right. Okay. I suppose leaving old Yeller her, just got lost in the forest, s- also. Yes. Yeah, to go find Bambi's mom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. Also, I'd like to point out that after Ch- uh, Shadow runs to Peter, while he's running, he's got the limp that he should have from mm-hmm. you know falling in there. It's miraculously gone the minute he touches Peter. Yes, it's the healing factor. Yeah, apparently yes. Peter's yeah, an alien not... like ET. Apparently, you know? that's why he goes to the police yeah. station. He doesn't know Barry because he's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, these guys look official. Let me ask them. All right. Uh, so my tragic maker is related in some regard uh, to Daryl's, and it's just it seems so unbelievable that these creatures would or these creatures this these dogs and cats could go that distance and survive it i could see one of them maybe but all three of them it just was way unbelievable and i don't know they're better together what if i were to tell you that the story that this is based on Mm -hmm. which is based on a book Mm -hmm. which is actually based on a real story right okay based how much based i mean admittedly at well it was in uh, Canada, not in this, the Sierra Nevada mountains, but mm. apparently they did the, the, these uh, two dogs and a cat did somehow make it across this great wilderness and found their family. And it, the Sierra mountains go up that far, don't they? Well, I mean, the California Sierra Nevadas, not okay. the Canadian Sierra Nevadas. Okay. Here, I'm not even sure if it's called the Sierra Nevada up that high. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I could see you're a skeptic and you don't believe it. Okay. <laughs> if animals I, it is go, unlikely. If animals go with their owners out, let's say, to the mountains, and then the animals get lost and the owners have to go back home. I could see the animals following their scent trail back home. But to go yeah. from home to a completely foreign place and not know how they got there to then having to cross this d- complete wilderness back to their original compass. home. Yeah, uh, other animals have I done mean, it. I mean, Shadow... Them off in the middle of nowhere and they've they found their way home. Miles. I mean, Shadow is a retriever, so he kind of knows where home is. Yeah. Some animals have that built in. Okay. Ask God if you have a problem with I that. I will ask maybe. God. I will. Maybe in our <laughs> spiritual speculation, we'll ask God about it. <clears throat> but, okay. All right. Fine. But it just seems unlikely. And I think it would have... I almost wonder if it would have been more powerful if Shadow hadn't survived the end. Or maybe... Yeah. Yeah. Or he but, does, but Sassy dies. And then that you that raises the stakes. Oh, will Shadow make it at the end? And I don't know. Right. That That's kind of what I was getting at. It's like, these moments are what I 
normally see in film and what I'm expecting to raise the stakes. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. while I hate and on some degree to see them come back, my heart swells and I get teary eyed seeing them come back because of the sentimentality yeah. basically mm -hmm. to it. Right. Yeah. So okay. I, that's and why no I feel way, conflicted. No way Chance would have made it on his own without Shadow. Yeah, oh yeah. Direction. I agree. I agree. I don't All know. Right. Of the three, Chance, I mean, Chance did live on the street before he got caught by the That's town. true. Yeah, but he would. So he, he at least had some street The way they set the smarts. movie up, the way they set the movie up, he wouldn't know which way to go. I'm just it, it, within That's the, true. That's the true. universe of the movie. No. Okay. He didn't feel that was home until he got there at the end. Yeah. Well, that leaves you, Exo. What's your attraction maker for Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey, the longest title in history? Before we get there, I have a bonus one. Ooh. That they never explained the note. Like, the I'm going to go take the animals yeah, with me. I would on this to know. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, what is the second part of that that would make sense to link with that? Yeah. I don't, I didn't get it either. So anyway, that was the bonus. Okay. All right. The the thing that I uh, found the most tragic about this, and I'm, I would have to maybe categorize it under slow and boring because... <laughs> This movie dragged for me. I don't know really? what it was. Maybe it was my, my attitude or something, but I kept checking my watch throughout it. There were moments. I would maybe say it's the pacing because there were moments like when the, the puma or wildcat is chasing him mm -hmm. or when uh, the cat goes over the waterfall. There were moments that I was fully engaged, yeah, yeah. but there were others that I was not, <laughs> and it was hard to, to stay And maybe that's just because of product of the times. So I'm used to movies, you know, going you know edited quicker and, sure. and stuff how many so, of those moments were with the humans a lot <laughs> yeah so because because my bonus one would have been the fact that uh the, all the human characters are completely pointless hmm. and the story that would be interesting to see that yeah, yeah i had kind of the opposite because they didn't the family didn't have much my third one if i had had one is i would have loved to have seen a little more with the family. Oh, okay. Like mm. the, like Peter, like all three of the kids at the end of the movie are calling the guy dad, dad yeah. and they've been yeah, yeah. a family for two weeks. It's like dad mm -hmm. put up posters that now all of a sudden he's cool. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, he showed that it's he like, cared, so now we like him. But but like I think yeah. what you're saying, Daryl, it's a bit too compacted. So more breath for that transition or transformation. Yeah, like happening. more. Yeah, like get a little more story with the family itself. Exactly. Um. So Paul, what you're saying though is, uh, you're like Shadow. It's there's something's wrong. It's been too long. This this movie's going on too long. Something's wrong. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well. Now that we've all entered our firing uh, trajectories into the targeting computer, Alice, you have a firing solution for us. Firing solution complete. <laughs> Rating salvo at the ready. On your mark. All right, time to stretch our salvo authority. <sighs> okay, so it's time for the moment of truth. Uh, do we rate uh, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, The Longest Tile in History, a classic would recommend anyone go see this whether or not you've seen it before it's worth your time to pop this movie in movie in and give it a watch a nostalgic if you remember liking it as a kid like you grew up watching this movie it's sure yeah watch it again you'll you'll get all the the feels and enjoy the seeing the animals and all that but if you've never seen this movie probably go watch something else i don't know cats versus dogs whatever Oh no. <clears throat> okay, I don't know. Some other air bud. I, I some other animal movie. Um, or a tragic. We'd recommend no one see this film. Whether or not you've seen it before, if you've if you have fond memories, uh don't rewatch it because rewatching it will sully them. Uh if you've never seen it, then just yes, you're clear. So let's start with Drew this time. What is your final reign for uh Homeward Bound? And you going with a prediction of nostalgic, what did it end up for you? It ended up a classic for me. Whoa. I was so uh I, I had not seen this movie since I was a kid. Yeah, same here. Which I think okay. I think it was a VHS I wore out. Whoa. Huh. Uh so I don't even I th I, I had to have been thrown away a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it in a good twenty, twenty five years. Yeah. And I was just so pleasantly surprised uh. at it. Like I said, I was like I said, those moments 
were so emotional for me. It's just, I got into it and it's like, Aww. yeah, this is a movie I wish I'd come back and watch more recently now. Aww, so, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a classic. Very cool. Uh, Daryl, how about you? You were also a nostalgic prediction. What did it end up? I agree with Paul. I bringing coming back to this movie, it brought back a lot of memories. I was, I'll disagree with Paul. I didn't get bored with this one at all. It pulled me right back in watching nice. it again. So it's definitely a classic for me. Classic wow. for Daryl. Paul, you uh, predicted classic. Did it end up that yeah. high? Maybe I just had the wrong attitude because <laughs> I was expecting, like Drew and Daryl, to to go into this movie that I once really enjoyed and like have these great moments and feelings, but they they felt kind of forced. Um, honestly, watching it this time, it's like you know, oh, I I see they're trying to pull out my heartstrings, even though you know they I know they're gonna make it. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of. So I was I was disappointed. Um, I I wrote down tragic. Whoa! Wow! What a swing! Oh my goodness! Well, before we get to my reign, <laughs> wow! Uh, in in chat, let's see. Ashley says nostalgic for this gal. One day I will revisit. Nice. So for me, <laughs> this let me okay. This movie. Was the perfect wow taking the band aid off real perfect <laughs> encapsulation of what we say most every time when we're explaining what our rating system is, and tragic being if you have fond memories, don't slay them with a rewatch because I had such fond memories of this movie, and rewatching this totally wrecked it for me. I do not, I it just like marred those memories for me because it just it wasn't there. There were good moments for sure. But it was maybe too sentimental or I don't know what it was about necessarily. It wasn't that they were talking talking animals animals. because they weren't really talking. (laughs) Their mouths were not moving. They're psychically linked, which is fine. I'm I'm fine with that. I mean, animals have different senses. Okay, cool. That's fine. Nice. No bad CG mouth movement. No bad CG mouth. That's a good point. Oh. And the training, I was amazed. Oh, the training was great. Yes. To do. And that out in the was, wilderness, yeah. like Daryl was saying, yeah. in real life, that's it was great. But so much of it seemed a stage, I guess I'll say. It didn't seem yeah. realistic in a lot of ways. And I just, it, it seemed too a bit too sappy. And all the... All the it didn't seem adventurous enough, I guess I want to say. For an adventure, it seemed See? like it was supposed to be very adventurous, but it didn't seem we're used to the matrix and all maybe this. That's the problem. And like I think Daryl was saying there wasn't enough stakes to make the adventure meaningful. I think that's what it is. Maybe add another animal that gets killed off or something, just to make it so that there's some way that this journey means something more. Or or maybe one of the kids dies. Maybe like maybe Shadow comes back, but then that oldest kid died somehow we've had this problem before where you're like kill the kids <laughs> and you wonder why we think you don't have a heart okay. <laughs> i'm kill sure i'm sure he Raise was disobedient stakes, make so it whatever mean something. <laughs> well that's why he wasn't the police station after oh, all. yeah anyway um yes i know you guys in chat are saying yeah sappy's fine and sappy is fine sometimes but for this one for me it was tragic so, unfortunately, we are at an impasse. We have two classics to two tragics. So, we're going to have to go to our patrons, our reflex hey. capacitors. Uh, at the $5 level, you will get to have a say in what the final reign is. So, uh, reflex capacitors at the $5 level, what was your final vote? Will it swing us to classic or tragic? Thank you, Francisco, from the past. Our patrons uh, at the five dollar more level, thank you again so much for voting, and they overwhelmingly picked classic for Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey, The Longest Tale in History. So, according to the Retro Rewind podcast, we collectively rate thanks to our patrons, Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey, The Longest Tale in History, a disputed classic film. We recommend anyone go see this, whether or not they've seen it before. All right, back to the RRP crew from the past. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Is that, they pick that? Can you guys believe this? Wow. Yeah, yes. So weird. It, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, weird, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked, but okay. Well, I, I'm not. It makes sense. 
now that we have that very surprising final rain, let's get back to our own time, good old 20XX. 20XX? Comsat online. Receiving incoming transmission. It feels good to be back, but we wouldn't have been able to travel back to 1993 to begin with if it weren't for our amazing reflux capacitors, namely... Jared holds our Deborah Powers, Brian Keating, Patrick Hicks, LJ Lowry, Chris Cowan, The Feeling Film Podcast, Chris Owens, Geek Devotions, The Untold Podcast, Mrs. Lomax, James Kennison, Drew of the Cellcast, oh, he's right here, Ashley oh. Cronenbitter, Pastor Deucin, Kenneth and Redeem Dutaku, Ryan Lingle, That's Our Babo, Josh Adams, D. Tungsten, and returning patron Andy Lewis, in addition to five other awesome patrons as well. Thank you all so, so much for uh, keeping the gigawatts coming. And if you want to help us keep us keep flying for as little as $1 a month and get bonus content for your generosity, we just released three awesome reviews of each season of Cobra Kai, which you'll have access to for just $1 a month. Head over to Red... One of them contains the S. <laughs> Great. Thanks for pointing that out, Paul. Yes, Red Band uh, bonus content for your patrons. <laughs> Not really. Um, I mean, yes, it does have that accidentally. Regardless, head over to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash support to help us grow via Patreon, Subscribestar, or PayPal. This stream is sponsored by PaulJPowers.com. And while we're thanking our supporters, we also want to give a big um, dog and cat hug plus another dog <laughs> hug <Sure. laughs> to both drew and daryl for supporting us with their thoughts about homeward bound tonight so let's start alphabetically and start with daryl where can people find you online is there anything cool you're, that's going on that you'd like people to know about um you can find me on facebook uh just look up my name uh i know i'm friends with at least a few members of the retro uh community retro rewind community um i don't have anything specific coming up because the one thing i'm doing is going to be over by the time this airs <laughs> bummer so but uh i don't uh the show i was supposed to direct last year has been currently pushed to july okay. but even that may or may not happen oh. depending on uh if we can start doing rehearsals right now, they're saying that August might be the first show we can do live, which oh, would mean okay. my show gets pushed back again because there's already a show booked in July. So the, that's the I hiding, don't have anything. The hiding place. Right? Yeah, the hiding funny. place. Yeah. yeah, it was supposed to be like last June. Then it was supposed to be in March. Oh, now it's geez. in July and it might get pushed again. So. So become friends with Daryl to find out the most up-to-date information. He'll tell exactly. you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's go to Drew. Thanks so much for being on again. Where can people find you on the interwebs? And is there anything cool you are doing people should know about? Like well, petting tribbles or something? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> there they are. Uh, I do a podcast uh, called The Cellcast, where we review animated movies and animated TV shows. Mm -hmm. I don't know what movie will be out when we record, when uh, this ep releases, because due to Snowpocalypse 2021 here in mm -hmm. Texas, uh, our schedules may have to rearrange, and so I'm not sure exactly what's going to be out, but mm -hmm. I can tell you, the t on the TV show side, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday... You can catch us reviewing Tangled the series right now. Oh, so cool. go give a oh, listen cool. to that. Very nice. All right. And what was the website for that again? That's at the cellcast.podbean.com and cell is spelled with a single L. Awesome. Don't go to the <clears throat> other cell. I don't know what you're going to find. <laughs> okay. Thank you again so much, Drew and Daryl. And a hearty thanks to those of you listening for the first time. And of course, all of you who are part of our Rad Rewinder community. You all who watch us live every week, whether we are recording this podcast or I'm playing a retro game or are an amazing group of people helping sustain the pod. But if you are looking for ways to get involved growing this Retro Rewind endeavor, uh, reach out to us on social media where we are at Retro Rewind Pod pretty much everywhere. Uh, but some of uh, you could buy some of our merch, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. 
uh, become a monthly patron, like we've said before, or simply just share your favorite episode of the podcast with a friend so that more people can enjoy the content of the Retro Rewind pod. So be kind and share Rewind because dogs rule and cats drool. I beg to differ. Yes. No, no, you do not differ. <laughs> oh, I differ. Yeah, he does. I differ a lot. <laughs> You have been listening to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash 220. Our review of Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey with me as your XO, PaulJPowers.com. Find me online and all my socials at PaulJPowers.com. Thank you for being an amazing friend uh, for another fun voyage, Paul. I have been and continue to be the captain of the pod, Francisco Ruiz. Find me on Twitter at FXRetro underscore, especially if you need pixel artwork commissioned. And we've been commissioned to announce we are part of the Christian Geek Central network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. Captain, we are on final approach to base. Salvo authority has been granted. Thank you, XO. And thank you all for listening. We pray you are more joyful now than when you first hit play. But like a Pokemon, we got to catch you all for Liar Liar, our next episode of the Retro Rewind podcast. <laughs> Retro Rewind mission complete. Proceed to Nap Point Omega and return to base. Hey, uh, Paul, you know what we haven't reviewed in a while? Young Indiana Jones! Then it is something that man was not meant to disturb. Trust me. Are you making this up as you go along? Yeah. Don't believe me. You will, Dr. Jones. You should have come this. You'll throw him? No way. Those people are trying to kill us. I know, Dad! It's a new experience for me. It happens to me all the time. Welcome back. It's a new year and another, the final set, I guess, of Young Indiana Jones, where uh, every other episode we're going to be reviewing, or every month we're going to be reviewing of a, an episode of Young Indiana Jones as we make our way to the final film in the trilogy, The and in fact, just the final film of Indiana Jones. Uh, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade, which we'll be covering this coming Christmas. But for now, uh, we're at episode 13 or chapter 13 of Young Indiana Jones. And Paul, will you give well, us some technical aspects like what's this called? When did it come out? All that stuff. All right. So this is The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones, chapter 13, uh, called Young Indiana Jones and the Attack of the Hawkmen. Mm. This was actually... Um, this, uh, believe it or not, it seems like it's two episodes in one when you watch it, like all the others. Mm -hmm. But this was actually a special that was all aired all at one time. Oh, as one, oh really? Uh, movie on October eighth, nineteen ninety five. Oh, okay, cool. So two years after would you Homeward care Bound, to give us. <laughs> yeah. So not long after, would you care to um, give us the synopsis? Yes, I'll try of this. I, well, if hour it's, and a half special. If it's <laughs> one hour and a half, I guess I only get one sentence then. So here's. I'll let you. I'll let you get two okay. if they're short. Okay. Uh, Indy is uh, is a photographer on a spy biplane, which uh, f photographs the Red Baron, a, a very famous. That's the famous character for the first part. Then. After that, he has to, uh, I guess he gets flown by uh, Charles Lindbergh. Is that who that is? The guy who, who so, goes but... across the Atlantic? He talks about that. And so yeah, uh, yeah. that was my assumption. Okay. Well, but it doesn't, I don't, anyway. Regardless, uh, to go into uh, Germany to try to uh, buy the, uh, I was going to say the brains, but buy the, the, buy someone off. To help the allies with their uh, better Anthony military, Parker. better military uh, industrial complex. Yes, and so he's a sp yeah. he's he's a spy on a plane, then a spy on the ground. There's your summary for yeah. Young Indiana Jones. There we go, Chapter Twelve. So disappointed there weren't any Hawkmen, you know, or Hawk women from the Justice League. In oh, there's lots that of would have been interesting <clears throat> disappointments in this one. 
Uh, but <laughs> let's let's start off, guys. Just let's go real quick. One thing you liked about this uh, chapter of Young Ann Jones, uh, Daryl. Let's start with you. Um, and oh, as and also curious, you can also start off this way, Drew and Daryl. Have you seen Young Ann Jones before, or was this your first exposure to this? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, per- video? Personally, this was my first exposure. I mm. mean, I've heard some of your guys's other reviews. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Of them. And to me, it didn't scream Indiana Jones. To me, it was a war movie that happened to have a character named Indy. Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. way of putting it. Yes. Mm-hmm. But for what it was, I actually thoroughly enjoyed the oh, cool. movie. Oh, nice. I, I thought it was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, the one thing I liked is I'll say they didn't sugarcoat, like being like an indie movie, they didn't sugarcoat the dangers of war yeah mm-hmm. like it, it, at the beginning of it you've got the two friends being split up yeah, and you right. got them being like macho like oh we're just gonna say goodbye but the one guy's like no dude i'm gonna give you a hug we might yeah. not see each other yeah. and then yeah, yeah. It's just like but it's just like when indy gets to the camp they're just like we haven't had a photographer last more than eight days yeah type thing like they just they didn't sugarcoat it, which you'd see in some, like, I, I yeah. think, like, a PG type TV show, they might kind of sugarcoat mm-hmm. some yeah, of the yeah. dangers of it, and mm-hmm. they didn't. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. I like that they had, I, I, that him and Remy had a goodbye moment because I don't think we're going to see Remy anymore. Well, I hope we see, do, but I think, I think it. we must because I remember trivia in, uh, and Temple of Doom said that him and Remy are after the Peacock Diamond at some point, which he ends up finding in the beginning of Temple of Doom. So, oh, unless that was okay. Well, so we'll see. Unless that was maybe that was made up. Yeah, something we or we already saw it didn't catch on. <laughs> oh, I guess that could be. But they no, they've just been in the war this whole time, so I don't think it would be. No, I thought that was part of. Did you say it was in the, in the jewels that um. That was part of the first Jackal one, not the Jackal oh, itself, but I maybe I don't know. I don't remember that. Anyway, anyway. we're going off on a change. <clears throat> yeah, Sorry. pretty much. Um, was was that something you liked though, uh, Paul? That Remy and him did get to or Remy's God now? <laughs> yeah, I did enjoy that. It's funny because my wife um, watched the first several Indiana Jones, basically all of them when he was a kid. Oh, okay. And then she thought it was like, this show is so ridiculous, slow and boring yes. that she stopped watching. And then she heard like, oh, th- th- she sees like every once in a while, oh, that's Sean Patrick, you know, Flannery, oh, he's yeah. cute. Why did I stop watching <laughs> this? And she walked in right at to this one. I'm watching it. And she walked in right as he, Indiana Jones is in the, uh, the back of the truck and he's, um, uh, punching the Germans oh, and yes. like hopping from totally one to another. Totally like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so full of, so to me, this episode, uh, just the opposite of what Daryl said, compared to all the other episodes we watched, this one kind of screams Indiana Jones more than the others. Yes, it does. In, in that adventure way. So um, there now most of it is boring, you know, but there are those, those adventurous moments that felt, um, like Indiana Jones. Yeah. And and going off that, the thing I liked was him in the second part, him being a spy and being by putting on the German uniform, all that was again very reminiscent of him uh in the submarine part of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he he tries to put on a uniform and he's spying around trying to get uh trying to uh find the Ark, find um oh my gosh, what's her name? Marion. Uh, Mary, yeah. yeah, so I, I I agree, Paul. A lot of this felt very pulpy, very much like an Indiana Jones thing, uh, yeah, uh, or a story. But um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I liked. Uh, Drew, how about you? This was not the first exposure I had to Indiana Jones because mm-hmm. y'all made me watch the Indiana Jones in Love episode last year. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That 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 was. I'm, I'm, I really hope that was the worst episode, but I have a uh, feeling no. listening to y'all's reviews it wasn't, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which scares me. Uh, but what I liked about this one, and y'all may not know this, but my studies in graphic design also included photography. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I was wa- keeping a good close eye on that view camera he was using in the back of that plane the whole time and enjoying the fool out of watching him having to deal with that while, you know, 
hanging outside the plane, nearly, yeah. nearly about to fall out to his death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just your time? Do any of you know if that's realistic? Because it seems like it'd be so much simpler to just cut a hole in the bottom of your seat and just put the camera right there, so you're staying down the whole time. That would be under the assumption that that plane was primarily being used for photography, because you wouldn't want to have to re- to replace that. I guess I don't know. And the holes might might be very thin, and yeah, so it might have cloth, better. It might are, have sec- those are cloth yeah. planes. Cloth covered and then it, you might have more security to attach the camera on the side rather yeah. than, than I, there. I suppose. If it, was, if it was a metal plane, I'd be right there with you, Francisco. But okay. I have a feeling the strongest part of that plane that they could attach that camera mount to mm-hmm. was the side of it right there where he had to hang out over it. To All right. Change All right. those change those plates out. Fair. Okay. And and I'm not saying that this this show is 100 percent historically accurate, but given the nah. attention to details that they do, I I would assume that if it was, if that was the norm, mm-hmm. that they would follow. That's suit. fair. That's fair. Okay. Cool, guys. Well, very good. Now let's get into the things we didn't like about Young Ann Jones. Um, and you know, talking about this this uh, this uh, part of him flying around. I could not, for the life of me, figure out why they would make him uh, as like I was thinking. Okay, so they're making him uh, photography. Oh, he doesn't like to fly. Since when does he not like to fly? I don't remember this because that's I'm so glad I, I'm not the only person who was thinking that. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> never snakes. Hint- I understand. Yes, but- yes, that's never hinted at in the movies at all. So I'm like, okay, so maybe the, he gets over his fear of flying. But okay, but I felt like. They had a great opportunity to, okay, he's in the back seat. He's taking pictures. Oh, what if the pilot gets, gets shot or something? And he has to take over flying. So he sort of learns how to fly. And then in Last Crusade, he's like, flying, yes. Landing, no. Okay, so he he has that's, some... Ex- that's Temple of Doom. No, it's not. It's Last Crusade. They're up in the... the we haven't watched... I yeah. because I remember it because it's an amazing movie because they're up in the zeppelin and they have to go in they have to escape okay. via the he biplane. He also says it in. He also said sorry, I haven't seen it in a while, but he also says. Oh, he it did in, at the beginning. Uh, Temple of Doom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're as they're flying and they're about to hit the uh, the mountain. Mm-hmm. He said, "Do you know how to flying? Yes, landing." Oh, uh, okay. I had forgotten that. Okay. Regardless, I had okay. forgotten that too. Regardless. It seemed like a perfect opportunity to set that up where he'd get some experience flying, but that doesn't happen at all. So I don't. I thought he's had experience in flying in some of the episodes as well, but oh. never. I've been on the lookout. He's never landed one. Yeah. Oh, and there's. Was, wasn't there a girl pilot back when he was in Africa that I felt like. She, like I felt like it would have been perfect for her yes. to come back it's, uh, in this one, but. Yes. Uh, but that no, didn't happen. That's Africa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. fine. Whatever. Um, so that's that's the thing I didn't like is that it seemed like they could have set up the movies or or pl- I know these came after the movies, but they could have played into what the movies had done yeah. better. Like a good yeah. prequel series would do. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's go with uh, Drew next. What's something you didn't like about this episode? Probably you want more love and, and stuff no, in this, no, right? No. Okay. I mean, I mean, a love interest would have been nice. But th- it didn't, that was the funny. Story, though, on the girl in the train. The story oh, yeah, didn't it need it. Yeah. Uh, I will say the part I did not like the most was that stupid plane that the was it the Germans at the end of that? Yeah, the Germans. I forgot who they were fighting uh, in World War, <laughs> in World War One. Oh, with the uh, really big but that plane stupid, thing. That stupid huge plane thing. I was like. No, I don't think they would have built that back then. That's a little big for this time period. Yeah, I'm not sure what that buys you having a bigger plane. By the way, I'm not sure what it more it holds more fuel, so you can make it all the way to New York. And that back. that was the oh, thought process, I guess and, that, that, and that's why it would have had so many wings because but, to give it more lift. At the same time, I'm still looking at it and going, "That is ridiculous looking," and it doesn't yeah, help that this was not the best use of model work. Composited uh, with uh, uh, regular green, footage, screen. yeah, screen exactly. Footage. Yeah, it was not. I mean, I've I've seen '60s era Godzilla films that did it better. Whoa! <laughs> green screen in that final shot was the one that stood out to me, like behind yeah. that plane. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 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 Though I will say, I will. Th- th- oh, I was gonna say Go the ahead. explosion of the pump. factory looked great. Uh, I thought that oh, yeah. looked amazing. Yeah. But okay. Go ahead, Paul. 
That was cool. And I thought how I i don't know if I've ever seen more airplane footage in anything else in my entire life. Well, like within a. Yeah. But in anyway, a, in a TV I thought that was show good. environment. Yes. Here's the thing with that, though. I don't I don't know how I and I'm not a filmmaker. I'm not sure how, how you overcome it. But I do know Top Gun. I was able to track who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, who I was rooting for at all points. In this, I I didn't know who was who. They were just a bunch of biplanes flying around. I didn't. That's because the yeah, Red too Baron far didn't get his get his signature plane until near the end. But of the, still, the first half. But still, I, yeah. I and they plus c- if you're gonna bring in the Red Baron, you know the only guy who can beat him is Snoopy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. Regardless, I wish they would have done something to make it. Oh, okay. I know that's Indy's plane, and it has a signature something on it that. Okay, I can track him. Indian head. Yeah, it had the coffin on it. The pirate. It was more of a pirate flag, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought it was it a Native the American uh, skull and crossbones. That was later. Yeah, that was one of the planes. Regardless, no, that okay. was that was Charlie's plane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Charlie, not Jaeger. Yeah. Anyway, Daryl, what was something you didn't like about this uh, this episode? Um, so I thought like a lot of the fight scenes were cool, but mm-hmm. the facts, the way they had like Indy surviving. Uh, a lot of the fights were yeah, completely yeah. unrealistic. Like yeah. the f- the swirling around as the plane with the plane, like holding on, and then that one, I'm just like, okay, fine. If he gets lucky and holds on to it, yeah, I'll buy that one. Yeah, yeah. But the one that to me was completely unrealistic is when he uses the wires to like, oh yeah, to pull, pull the rudders up, yeah, and, like, that's and hold them for hands. however long. Yeah, no. and I'm just like that 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 seemed. That that kind of took me out a little bit, just like that. That's it seemed so unrealistic to totally. me, mm-hmm. exactly to hold that up for my 40, 40 kilometer flight home or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm not buying that one. Yeah, totally. So I, seemed seemed unrealistic. Unrealistic. I guess that leaves Paul. What's something you didn't like about this? <laughs> What? There was one. <laughs> Wasn't there at least one? There was okay. one Wilhelm scream yeah. in this. That was nice. Um, I'll throw in a bonus because um, it's not really – it's just a, a missed opportunity mm. when at the – towards the end where he cuts the rope and he swings down, that would have been a great music cue to introduce. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. You know, yes. Such a missed opportunity there. Yeah. Um, but maybe it has to do with rights or whatever. But um, one of the more unrealistic thing, and I – I, it always takes me out whenever I see this in movies. Mm. I don't know why they do it in TV shows because I guess it's not good writing. Um, whenever the hero is involved and mm-hmm. in being chased by the enemy, if he's far away, they will shoot at him, try to kill him. But as soon as they come in within reach, oh, okay. we're not going to try to kill you anymore. You. We're going to capture oh, you. Oh. And so you'll be fine and you can live to save the day. <laughs> this is wartime. Come on. You're going to shoot to kill regardless. This is war, like, look, peacock. Are you going to kill him or not? Do not make exactly. a problem without breaking eggs. Every cook will tell you that. Exactly. So if you're going to go kill him, then you shoot him. And if you get closer, you shoot him to make him dead. Come exactly. on. That's a very fair point. Uh, does anybody know it would it have been realistic for that pilot to have like taken Indy to his house and like treat him to a meal like that it's kind of like a level of respect I'm like part of me is like I buy that and part of me is like I don't know yeah I I don't know because this we're talking about uh, World War One era where I think the pilots are kind of treated like the cavalry where they're obviously the higher paid people Mm mm-hmm but I have no. For all I know, that guy was a lord and was just being nice. Yeah. To someone no. he liked. He was a for baron. Sorry, baron. Yeah. And He's I didn't nobility. See any right on his face. And European nobility, they get to do a lot of stuff normal people wouldn't do. Exactly. Yeah. At okay. the same That's time, go point. to the mess hall. Wow. <laughs> anyway, guys. Okay. So uh, I don't. I, we stopped ranking these like the best Indiana Jones ones, so I I think we'll just end there unless you remember Paul. So oh. did we? Right, no, based on this episode. Oh, would we want to keep? Would we want to keep watching? Right, that's what it is. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, Daryl, based on what you've seen of this episode, and I guess also you could also factor in what you've heard us talk about in previous ones, but mainly this one. Would you want to continue watching Young Indiana Jones to see what happens? 
If it was just this one, yes. Okay. I don't know about the other ones, but I enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. I would love to see more, like, follow this story. Okay, cool. Uh, how about you, uh, Drew? I would not go back and watch Kid Indie because I've already watched more than uh, more of that than I intended to. But honestly, the the adult indie stuff, this is looking pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I but I don't know if I'm going to go to the trouble of watching it because you know I don't have a copy <laughs> of it anywhere. The, uh, well, oh Amazon. Oh, oh, oh Amazon. Is it back on okay. Amazon? Uh, well i don't know i got it off of amazon gotcha. um like when right when we started watching mm -hmm. this so i have all these on dvd nice nice uh so so paul you're committed to watching them all but would you want to if you weren't yeah probably not i mean i've wanted to um but honestly if we weren't if i wasn't quote unquote being forced to i i i'd have a hard time convincing myself because there's so many other things that i want yeah to see, uh, mm -hmm. but this this is this is i i agree like what daryl said this is one of the um the better yes, ones absolutely and, yeah and i'm because of that i'm i'm looking forward to more of of these mm -hmm. i'd say it's the same for me i'm 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 trepidatious as always uh like every pretty much every episode i'm like okay is this gonna be a good one or a bad one <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh they do seem to be scaling more and more toward being better so that's yeah. i have a bit I more i think it's becoming it's becoming he's becoming more indie yeah that yeah know. yeah i think that's a good way of putting it exactly yeah. all right guys well thank you drew thank you daryl thank you paul and for me francisco we bid you a whoop -ah. there you go <laughs>